I'm sitting with a Pro Football Hall of Famer, Super Bowl MVP, and a man that really epitomizes what it means to be a Raider on and off the field. We go back to 1965, <laughs> and you were selected by the Raiders in the draft, played 14 seasons. What does it mean to you to represent the silver and black like you do? It means everything. And, and what, what Al liked, he liked, he liked toughness in people, and that's what our team was. It was just a, tough, a bunch of tough guys, guys from tough backgrounds, guys that were always the underdog in their life. And he loved that, and that's what I that's what I liked about the Raiders because when you're that type of guy, you just fit in automatically. You're like a piece to the puzzle, and that's that's how we were as a team for for years, and and that's what I liked. It was a great team concept all all my 14 years. It never changed. Let's go back to when you were a little guy, your youth. <laughs> what inspired you to play football, or was there someone that inspired you? At that time. You know, you didn't have all these organized programs. You know, you played in, in, in a yard somewhere all the time. So, you know, you could be the younger guy, the guy sort of in the middle, and then you're always playing with older guys mixed in. My brother Ken was a good influence on me because he was a great athlete. Older and, brother? Yeah, my okay. older brother. And um, you had those guys that were always, you were always playing against them. So now let's fast forward to your playing days here. You were a favorite target of Daryl LaMonica and Ken Stabler. Let's start with Daryl, mm -hmm. your connection with him. What was that like? Our quarterbacks back then never told us how to run routes, not as like it is today. All the quarterbacks had to know was if you were supposed to be in a certain area at the end of your route, that they didn't, they didn't care how you got there. That's just where be the, there. Just be there, and that's the, that, what, the ball is going to be there. Yeah, so it was like, you know, telling Daryl, uh, a lot of times, because Daryl loves to coach you all the time, you know, uh, you know, Daryl, don't worry how I get there, just, I'll be there, all right? And Kenny knew I was going to be there, right? you know, and so that was the difference with me, with each of them, not negatively, positively, and, and Kenny, you know, had a, a obviously, a di two different quarterbacks, had a great touch, you know, Daryl liked to get the ball in there a little quicker, a little tougher, a little harder, and Kenny had a little better anticipation. Uh, where you're going to end up at, you know, so the ball was in the air a lot before you even turned around, so you had to be ready and re prepared to catch the ball. Now, after your playing days, you joined the Raiders coaching staff for 18 seasons. Not every player can coach. You <clears throat> clearly could. You also coached with John Gruden. What made <laughs> you want to join the coaching ranks? I just enjoyed it. You know, I, I was very fortunate and all the years coaching with the Raiders that I had some great players. Fun to watch, fun to coach. Oh, fun to watch, fun to coach. And to have guys like Timmy Brown for years, you know, because Timmy, uh, with me, uh, he was not only a player, but he was somebody that really helped me along as a coach, you know, tried to get me to quit cussing so much, but you know, I don't know how much he accomplished that, but he impressed me and then being able uh, to be a guy around guys like Willie Galt, Mervyn Fernandez, you know, I mean, you see Willie Galt run, I mean, you go, my God, you know, coming from Chicago, playing this one Super Bowl, and now he's with us and seeing him run by guys. And then you have a guy like Mervyn Fernandez, you know, from San Jose State, you know, a seven foot high, high jumper, you know, but very powerful and to see that, you know, and, just, and then we'd have, you know, guys like, uh, like James Lofton, uh, then James Jack playing with us in the speed he had, you know, and it just, you know, being able to work with those guys, it was impressive all that period of time because they had a style to them, and I loved it. Your first experience coaching with John Gruden, or his first experience, <laughs> what with do you me? see? <laughs> yeah, what do you see in Gruden that you saw back then? Now, the way his personality was then, his intensity, uh, his approach out on the field, uh, with all the players. He, it hasn't changed one bit. He expects you to carry a lot of responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, because John likes to get out there and and get plays called and see guys perform and get the things in, get personnel groupings in, get the plays in, so everybody knows what they're doing. And that's how John approaches it. And, and I, I love coaching for John, you know, because he had that attitude. It was the type of attitude that I was brought up in when I first started playing football. The Raider family lost a couple legends who you played with in Willie Brown and Cliff Branch. What are some fond memories that you have starting with Willie? <laughs> Willie, well, you never wanted to be, have to be in training camp and be on Willie's side, okay? Because he was going to beat you up, <laughs> all right? But Willie, Will, Willie was a, a dominating player, you know, very impressive. And I always 
used to tease him uh, that interception he had in the Super Bowl and I ran it back and you know it's always on a highlight whenever we're at an event and they show it to him, I go the game was already over <laughs> you know but that interception didn't mean anything just to jerk him around you know but uh, but I had a good rapport with Willie and I love Willie because just the way he was as a person off the field and how he was as a player he was fantastic. And how about Cliff? Cliff, uh, we had a special relationship that, you know, from when he first started and, you know, until we had our period of time when I finally got let go and Cliff continued on, which he had great years after that, especially Super Bowls. And uh, it, was, uh, it was great to see Cliff um, not only as a close friend, but uh, really develop into a ball player that no one thought that he could. You know, just bring him in and just let him run straight. You know, well, Cliff really worked at it. He got to be a very, very dangerous receiver. When you look at the Oakland Coliseum, all the history there, the memories, is there one that stands out to you? Just being able to be at that stadium. You know, remembering being in that locker room and going through that tunnel and going out to the field, uh, seeing the people in a black hole and the people when you're coming out that you know you've seen are hanging over the railings and all that and you get out there and it's very emotional because uh, people actually love you guys yeah you know and then you know be able to go out there and perform and win some of the games that we had in that stadium you know like you know we're talking about you know years ago when when Daryl was playing in 67 we won a championship game here you know we went 40 to 7 you know, the place is going crazy. And then we had with Clarence catch that big ball and see the hands, they go crazy. We had the Heidi, Heidi game when we beat the Jets, when all of a sudden everything we just went, went against the Jets and we just ended up blowing them out. You know, it just goes on and on and on about the games that you, you played. It, you know, for years, the impressive thing with that stadium is every immediate person Every person involved in any type of uh, media relations, newspaper, whatever, radio, whatever they do, they all want to be here at this Oakland Coliseum because that was like the, the mecca of football, you know, and especially when we had Monday night games here, you know, it was just so electrifying. So, you know, you had Howard Cosell and all those guys, you know, who were always against us, <laughs> you know, being able to shove it up it's to okay. them. Chip on yeah. your shoulder. Yeah, just brush it off a little bit, you know. Uh, to be part of that is amazing. And then thinking back when I first came into the league and guys like I started with Tom Flores as the quarterback and uh, having guys that, that were there that were cast off from the NFL because it was the NFL, AFL still at that time. And seeing the guys that got let go by the NFL that Al brought in and how hard those guys worked and they were just tough guys. And then going and having success and thinking about because I was young enough and got old enough where, you know, your thoughts go back to them too. Mm -hmm. You know, how it was when I first started with them, you know, how a lot of guys took care of me, you know, and that kind of just spun off into, into the rest of the team. And that's how I was my career.